Hello everybody, this is Dr. McBrick and I'm here with a very, 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 very tall Saturn V rocket to celebrate the Artemis One mission that is blasting off from the Space Center down here in Florida on Monday. talk about these rockets for a few minutes and as you see of course I have the Saturn V. Now Lego has not done a proper um, kind of Artemis uh, um, SLS type of system as of yet. Now they've got close and um, but they haven't done as detailed a version as they have with the Saturn V. Now the Saturn V in its time was the most powerful and is still until the launch the um, most powerful rocket ever known to humankind. Um, as a matter of fact, in 1967, I believe is when they started um, testing this rocket to go up into space and see if it would actually work and everything like that. Um, now this rocket is actually larger and taller, um, standing at 363 feet, I think. Um, and uh, whereas the uh, Artemis stands at 322 feet. So the Artemis is smaller, but once the Artemis is launched, it will be the most powerful rocket um, um, in the world. So this was a workhorse. And this, of course, took astronauts to the moon. It um, put up Americans portion, America's portion of the, um, the uh, space station. Uh, and I believe at some point um, it took up uh, Skylab um, and some things like that. And I think there were like nine or ten manned missions, crewed missions, um, to uh, using this rocket uh, to boost um, this little tiny capsule up at the top um, to boost that to the moon and around the moon and things like that. Um, let's take a look at the trajectory that the Saturn V rocket took because it's much smaller in terms of, in terms of I can't say that word right after my brain surgery, in terms of the trajectory um, that the Artemis SLS will be taking. So uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, here is a graphic courtesy of the BBC. Now, as it says on the bottom there, it is not to scale. As a matter of fact, it's a little obscured, um, but you can see the Saturn V route to the moon, and you can see the various stages there from when it was launched at Cape Canaveral, or Cape Kennedy, uh, then Cape Canaveral now, uh, here in Florida, and uh, you can see, this, see the stages of the rockets as they fell away, and how it came to the uh, lunar module, and how that circled around in that blue line uh, around the moon and land. Landed, and then after it landed, it uh, took off again, and it came back around and went all the way to Earth, and um, then the, uh, um, the 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 CM, the command module, was ready to uh, disengage, and then it landed in the ocean. So now let's juxtapose the Artemis One with the Saturn V um, trajectory. And what's really, really cool is they take similar trajectories to begin with in terms of, you know, you fly out of Florida, um, you start to uh, lose the different stages of the rocket and stuff like that. Um, but then where it differs is where you go into a distant retrograde orbit. And this is really to do some exploration as well as to make sure everything works. And so the Artemis rocket is actually going to be going a lot farther than the Saturn V ever did. And as a matter of fact, in um, the, uh, um, the the second mission, it's going to take people out farther away from the moon and on the other side of the moon farther than um, any human has ever traveled. So um, it's really interesting um, to look at the two trajectories. Feel free to pause it, take a look at it. And thanks to NASA and the BBC for those pictures. Now let's take a look at the Saturn V rocket and look at the various stages and things like that. And here I'm showing you the Lego model and you can see those wonderful thrusters, the engines that thrust the rocket up into space and all of the fuel compartments and all that sort of thing and the various stages of the rockets. Now, I know that I didn't take it apart exactly the way that Lego had built it, um, but I was trying to do it all one-handed and show you these pieces and stuff. But you can see the various stages and each, as each stage comes apart, the rockets propel it 
forward. Um, and uh, it's all kind of connected there and everything like that. Very similar to the Artemis uh, rocket um, and uh, the SLS that now exists. Um, and there's, of course, some Lego pieces inside of it that you can see um, and things like that, how they build it. And it's really cool, the Lego model. Again, this is another section that comes off and uh, also has its own rocket and thruster features and things like that on it. Um, and uh, it helps to uh, maneuver the uh, um, the the actual uh, model. Uh, I mean, the, <laughs> I can't even think. It actually helps to maneuver what's inside of this. Now, I didn't take it apart correctly because this is all together. You can see in the graphic there how it all pieces together. Um, and so those things, the uh, lunar module and the command module, the command module stays up in um, orbit while the lunar module goes down um, onto the moon, lands on the moon. Uh, let's pretend this is the moon here. We better take the astronauts off because as far as we know, there aren't people on the moon at the moment. Um, and the <laughs> anyway, and so it did. So it landed there on the moon um, and, uh, and uh, touched down and everything like that. Now, when it's time for it to take off and go back to the command module, um, we, uh, oh, what's happened? Well, Oh, 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 well, it rolled off. Anyway, um, what happens is that the gray part um, that you see here uh, basically lifts off and goes up with its own little jets um, up to the command module up above the moon, um, orbiting there, and then they connect and dock. And then that um, is, uh, is what uh, um, starts to head home by the way. Uh, and that's uh, what heads home is that command module. Um, and uh, the astronauts uh, prepare to uh, take that. And then finally, the command module comes in at, oh, I don't know, probably 25,000 miles per hour, um, lands in the ocean as automatic chutes come open, lands in the Pacific, and uh, Artemis will be landing in the Pacific as well. So we look at this and we find that this uh, model came with two little astronauts. Now, if you look at the scale, it's a little, they're a little bit smaller. Humans would be a little bit smaller than that. Um, but even just looking at the scale of these micro figs here compared to this rocket, um, it's an unbelievable size. Um, and you need that much fuel, obviously, in a rocket to get that little tiny capsule up there off into the off into space um, you need all that thrust to leave the gravitational pull of the earth but uh, when we look down here we see how small it really is and if any of you have been to the florida um, cape uh, canaveral uh, formerly cape kennedy space center um, and you see uh, in museums and things um, pictures of this rocket as well as seeing a saturn V rocket um, you will see how humongous these things are. The pictures do not do them justice in terms of the size of these rockets. So with that, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't. It's totally free, cost you nothing. Hit that bell um, and check out my almost 400 videos that I have on my Lego channel if you're interested in Lego. And, uh, you know, from mocks to cities, uh, I had an amazing city and theme park, things like that, uh, product reviews, a bunch of stuff like that. Um, but check it out. I appreciate you stopping by. Um, and uh, with that said, I hope that every Thing with the uh, Artemis and the uh, um, Orion missions go well. Uh, and uh, I wish Godspeed to those astronauts and to the uh, crew uh, in subsequent missions and uh, to the crew who is uh, um, taking the, uh, the SLS um, off into space to test to see how far it can go. So with that, this is Dr. McBrick signing out.